He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Welcome to our, our Easter worship. We had a wonderful sunrise, and I know God is blessing us here there. If you're watching online, just let us know who's watching and how many are watching with you. Please rise. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who went to the cross for our sake. The love of the Father who put an end to the power of death through the resurrection of Christ and the promised Holy Spirit who gathers us together be with you all. Let us join together in the opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who call on the strong name of the risen Lord. As we gather in the victorious name of Christ, let us open our hearts to Him and confess the ways in which we have failed to follow His will and the ways in which we simply neglected our calling as His disciples. Lord of heaven and earth, of the living and of the dead, we come before you confessing our sins, asking for your gracious mercy. By our human nature we are sinful and unclean, 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By your loving kindness, we implore you to grant us forgiveness and restore us to your salvation that we might live holy lives here and now and be with you in the final resurrection. Amen. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, God declares to all who believe and confess their sins that we are forgiven and restored to a right relationship through Jesus Christ. We have been redeemed and renewed by Christ, our Passover Lamb. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us walk in newness of life, following our Lord Jesus in holy obedience. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, for our redemption you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of the enemy, Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him who died and rose again with us. For us. Grant this, we pray, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy, to God on high and on earth peace good will to all Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading today is from the 15th chapter of Exodus, verses 1 through 11. Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, 
and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in your power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like a stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hands shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsively Psalm 118, verses 15 through 29. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray. O Lord, O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 6b through 8. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel is from the 20th chapter of St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Uh, as we come on this Easter morning, as we remember this, these events that had occurred, as we can think about Mary, Mary and her friends, they, they weren't able to go to the tomb. They weren't able to prepare their friend like they normally would. So Mary, Mary the mother, uh, Mary Magdalene, Mary, Mary the mother of Jesus, Mary the mother of, well, Mary the mother of Joseph and James, uh, Salome and Joanna, all were at the tomb, is the way we understand from all the accounts. They're on their way. Imagine as they're going, the anticipation they're feeling. Because they couldn't go right when the Sabbath ended, because it was still dark. So they waited until the morning time, right before dawn, so that way they could be there as the light was cresting over. And you see, then they see the sun breaking over the horizon. We can just see the images there as there's that morning fog, that crispness in the air, that smell of the dew. As they are wondering what they're going to do when they get to the tomb. Are they going to be able to enter in? Are they going to be able to get the stone rolled away? Be able to clean their beloved, their, their friend, the one who had been crucified. The last they had seen him, he was scarred and beaten to wipe away the dirt and the grime from all the wounds and to prepare him as would be right. But here they come and they find that the tomb is open. The tomb has been opened. And the tomb is empty. They run and they tell the disciples, and of course in this we find that, G, uh, that Peter and John, they are running to go there. Of course, the one that Jesus loves, John, has to beat to win, win the race to the tomb. And they look in and they see, and, uh, and he sees the claws laying there. And then Peter, he just runs boldly in. And they see it all and witness it. 
but they don't know exactly still what is going on. They're not 100% certain of what has happened. And the message comes. You can just imagine Mary as she's waiting there and these angels give this word to her. And then she turns and sees this man. Of course, she's not expecting to see her Lord Jesus there because it had never been done before. You don't expect to see one that you've seen dead. And they had seen him fully. All the brutality he had faced. But we are reminded of this great victory of what God is doing and what the importance of this is as we think, you think about the Israelites in their time as Moses is retelling and they're singing this tale, remembering what God had done. Because God had never done what He did for them either before. Nobody would expect the waters to come up and be parted and they walk on the dry land into the security of God as they are brought into the safety of what God had done. Nobody would expect that to happen. Nobody would believe that the waters would part one way and another. How do you do that without messing up the streams and, how, and the flow and all of that? How would that work? It's against nature. It doesn't work that way. And so many would struggle, and we know still struggle, uh, not understanding what God is always doing. Not understanding how God could hold the sun in, sp- in place for a whole day where it stayed without setting. Or move the sun back so the steps would go back, the light would go back on the steps. How would you do How would that happen? That's against nature. It's not natural. But see, God works in the supernatural. God works wonders to show us His grace and His glory to those whom He has chosen. Just like He did to the people of Israel. He did, He continues to do for those of us who walk in Him. And then to see how God would go and help win the victory against the the Egyptians that were chasing after God's people. The Israelites had crossed in peace, but he had caused a darkness to fall upon the people of Egypt, the Egyptians, as they're preparing to cross over. And then as they go across, thinking that this will be easy, they'll be able to gain victory over all these Israelites who are not able to defend themselves. And they go in with boldness and pride, but God shows His power by causing everything to become mucky and muddy, where there was, where it all congealed, as it says in the song, where it all came together and became thick, and they became stuck in the midst of it all. And God covered them up and won the victory for His chosen. We see how God continues to win victory for His chosen. There are so many that would believe that, yes, the victory has been won. The the, the death of our Lord, it has to be done. He died on that cross. We don't see anyone ever rise. But God has another plan for those who believe and trust in Him. God brings restoration to His people. He brings newness of life to His people. In the morning, that first Easter morning, there were many hearts that were heavy. There were many that were struggling. Many that didn't understand fully. Even the, even the, apost- the disciples at that time, they didn't fully understand what was happening. They were uncertain. They were uncertain of what God had fully done and what it all meant. And how many of us are uncertain? Walk and understand. And we hear the story year after year. We hear what it is that God has done year after year. But what do we know? How do we understand this victory that God is winning for us? That God has conquered death and sin. That we would know him 
that He died upon the cross and took upon Himself all of our sin, that He would rise again, that we would see Him on the cross, but then we would see Him risen again, and we would walk with Him for those days. And we see and hear the stories through these 50 days of Easter as we hear the continuation of how He continues to teach. As He has been risen And these words we say with great hope, He is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We know that our Lord is a living God. We know that He is not dead. We know that the tomb is empty. We know that He died for our sins. We know that He is resurrected, that we will one day too be resurrected with Him. And that we will know the fullness of the glory of our Father in heaven because of the great gift that He has given to us. To understand how this victory has been won. How in our lives we may feel that everything has fallen apart. Everything is going in the wrong direction. That everything seems to be against us as Christians. We know this in our world today as we understand that the world does not celebrate Easter as we do. They do not celebrate our risen Lord in the same way. Our world has their own religions and their own holidays which they put out there for all to honor and all to praise the gods of this world. And we as Christians may lose our hope, we may lose our sight, we may think the victory may be being snatched away from us as we see things fall away, as we see things go in a direction that we don't desire for them to go. But we know that our Lord has already won the victory. He's already paid the price. And we know that He can do great and wonderful things to those who turn to Him and cry out to Him. Even when we fail, even when we fall short, we know that our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ does offer for us forgiveness and newness of life. We know these things because our Lord has told us these things. And just as the leaven only takes a little bit to fill the whole batch, or oftentimes we would say, It only takes one bad apple to spoil the whole bunch. But when we think about what God has done and what Christ is doing for each and every one of us, He is bringing great restoration. So in the same way, in the same light, as we turn and we trust in Him and we lay it all at His feet, we know that He will bring restoration. Because it only takes takes a little to spread through the whole. It only takes a little for us to understand the great miracle that God can and is doing within us. He is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Always in the present, we know that He is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia! And we celebrate this glorious gift this glorious promise, this glorious hope, this wonderful presence of our Lord and our Savior that comes to us every day that we come to Him. He never leaves us. He never lets us walk alone. But we are always, always able to call out His name and know that He is there with us. Because we know the truth. We know what He gives to each and every one of us. We know the promises. We know the promise of the tomb. And we learn and we grow and we understand fully more, more, more what it is that He is doing and where He is at work in our lives and in our world. And He pours out His Spirit in great abundance that we all can turn to Him and know His love and know His care and know His salvation and know His love because He died upon the cross for you and for me. And He rose this day that we would know the victory. The victory that was won for us when Satan was crying out saying, yes, I have finally destroyed the One! Today, Satan is reminded of the great loss that he has faced. That eternity has been won 
by our God. The end is already written. The victory, the victory is ever before us. The victory is won. The promise is given. The hope of eternal life lays always before us. And the peace of Christ stands ever before us. And may that peace, that glorious peace, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the one true faith of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us all rise and join together in the hymn of the day. Now all the vault of heaven resounds. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, we give you thanks that through Christ Jesus you have won the victory over sin and death. Help us, Lord, to tell the story of that victory and give thanks for it every morning so our daughters and sons may know your unshakable love and live in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, as the morning sun warms the earth, warm the hearts of those who are or will be planting their crops. Grant that the ground may be fertile and the growing season would be long and fruitful so all people may be fed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, on this day, when the celebration of your redeeming work in Jesus Christ is at its highest point, strengthen and sustain those whose faith is new and tender. Help them to see in your church's witness a new vision of life in which grace and mercy are its guides. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of power and strength, give your strength to all who feel weak or weary and are struggling with grief, illness, or difficulties in their lives. Let us lift them up now silently or aloud. Lord, in your give them hope in Christ who makes all things new. Lord, in your mercy. God of all mercy and grace, your only Son's death and glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of death and redeemed all creation. Grant that we may no, no longer look for the living among the dead and instead daily die to sin and rise to newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Apostle Paul admonishes us, examine yourselves before eating the bread and drinking the cup. Scripture hereby encourages us to come to the Lord's table, believing that Jesus Christ is himself present in the bread and the wine, as his words declare, this is my body, this is my blood. Scripture also encourages us to come trusting in the forgiveness of sins, as Jesus says, for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Finally, we are encouraged to do as Christ commands when he says, Take, eat, drink, do this in remembrance of me. When we repent of sin, believe his words, and do as he commands, we come in a worthy manner and join the whole Christian church on earth, in giving thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for so great a gift. We also pray that his love will renew our love for one another, and that we with the whole Christian church may know the comfort and joy that is in Christ our Savior and Lord. Receive now his grace with believing hearts. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising to life again 
has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, the night in which our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to all of his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after they all had supped, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all of his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a New Testament in my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is now ready. Come and eat.
Gracious God, you have fed us at this holy meal with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We praise you for the glorious resurrection of Christ, which is a sign of your great love for your people. You have forgiven us through this sacrament and restored us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, come up. You can be before the cross over here as we prepare our hearts for the offering. We have special music. So. Generous God, you have given us treasures too numerable to count. Grant us faith to be generous with all that you have first given us, our time, our resources, and our possessions. May we boldly trust that your providence, presence, and care are a never-ending reality in our lives. Amen. 
You may rest your knees for a moment for some announcements. Uh, today is the uh, start of our Children, Youth, and Family Ministries coffee fundraiser. Uh, we will brew some coffee. Or, well, uh, let's see. I think is I don't know if there is any samples down below. I think that was uh, together. If you missed the breakfast, there are some samples. But after services next week, you'll have some uh, some. Uh, Actually, it says except today. There we go. I just need to read further. Rachel said, uh, all right, available on Sundays after service except today. All right. Kids, make sure your parents pick up an order form to take home with you. Order forms are in the back by the bulletins. Yeah, there is the Highlander Grog on there. Uh, so for those of you that really liked the Highlander Grog last time, uh, you, can, you can stock up on your stock with that. Also, Jamaican Me Crazy and a few other fun blends in there. Uh, so that does support our children, youth, and family ministry. As it is the last Sunday of the month, we have an April calendar available at the back of church that you can pick up on your way out today. Most of our newsletter, including team and council meeting minutes, can be found online at newsletter.clockchurch.org. On the printed calendar page, there is a list of where to connect with us online including our newsletter web address. There is a correction in our bulletins. There will be confirmation class this week as the students decided they wanted an extra week to have an end of year party. Uh, so there will be Wednesday, we will have confirmation. Uh, the Gillett Surin Clergy Association hosts a prayer luncheon at noon on Wednesday, April 17th. We'll be meeting at M's Restaurant on Main Street. And don't forget, the cantata is coming up this week. Thursday, Friday, uh, Saturday is 7 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. So come and join us for the Easter Cantata. It'll be a wonderful time to have and uh, stay for the dessert afterwards and congratulate everybody on their wonderful performance that we know that they will have as they will glorify God. Let us all rise now for our benediction. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you to the end of your road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands teach you to serve one another. May the Christ who loves with a broken heart be your love forever. And may you find the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet find the face of Christ in you. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in the closing hymn. Hallelujah. Sing to Jesus.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May Christ's living presence live in your hearts and your minds on this day and every day. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.